Hello, lovely ladies in the Goddess Creations for Women group and beyond for this is the final, the 25th video in the Goddess Creations Empowerment series. And hi, I am Shanna Lee Gray from Goddess Creations, the Empowerers. And I've been interview, I've been interviewing many lovely women in this series. Today I'm speaking to Tazima Ayana Paris. Um, and Tazima is a sex and intimacy coach and CEO of Infinite Relating. She has podcasts and interviews and is author of Pleasure Without, the book Pleasure Without Guilt, around the theme of orgasms and the clitoris. Now, having experience in BDSM, Tazima is committed to helping modern women go from frustrated to fulfilled in sex, dating and relationships. When a woman's emotional and intimate needs are met, she is a powerful and radiant, creative and confident, resourceful and generous. Actually, a, in short, she is a force of nature and she believes that life must be fun. So Tazima is going to share, says, sorry, Tazima says that sexual pleasure for women gives cle clues to be less resentful and wear the pants in a feminine way. Going after this is healing relationships and others and your own body. So all of this Tazima is going to be speaking about. Today she will be sharing also on how to go on the exploration of self by being bad to compensate for considering others. So I'm going to be welcoming Tazima Ayana Paris to speak on pleasure for women. And hello, Tazima, good to see you. Great to see you. Thanks for hosting me. I really appreciate it. Yes. I just want to say, lovely viewers, thank you for watching. If you are watching live, do a hashtag live so I know you are there. And if you're posting comments, please state your name. If you're watching in the replay, do hashtag replay. Tazima. Pleasure for women. What are we talking about? <sighs> it's all about, um, it's really about a woman stepping into what her feminine really is. So pleasure is a feminine quality. It's a feminine superpower. It is the, it's the, the stuff that makes life yummy. It's the stuff that makes life good, enjoyable. It should not be put on the back burner. It should be made a priority because of how many benefits it has specifically for women. It is the antidote for resentment. <laughs> it's the antidote for anxiety. It can be the antidote for sort of a, a lot of our modern woes <laughs> if we were to prioritize it. Wow, <laughs> I would almost say, so where can I get it? <laughs> so how can, we? because that is that, it sounds like actually um, a medicine. Yeah, as you said, a medicine or actually a healing factor. Mm -hmm. It is, it is. How many women actually do know about this? I'm afraid that not many women know about this. And the women who do know about this are often considered, it's those bad words that we use to, discuss women, you know, she's slutty. Why is she so flirty? Why is she so bossy? Why is she so, you know, it's, oh, if a woman is turned on, she will most likely be going for the things that she really desires because she's in touch with her desires. She's in touch with who she is. She's in touch with what makes her heart sing versus being, you know, connected, making sure that she looks good in other people's eyes. Mm. So it's, it's really, it is a superpower because of those, because it turns the reference internal, your references inside of you, instead of having this external directive, what I should do, what, what is expected of me, all of these pieces that, that we, that cultivates anxiety <laughs> for women. <laughs> Well, I, as you were speaking, I suddenly remembered that, well, remembered as if it's so long ago, but when I am um, turned on or when it's spring, <laughs> you know, I used to say in my job, oh dear, the sun's shining again. And they would like to say, oh dear, there she goes, because my lights were just my inner light. I don't, I'm, I'm making it, I'm making it softer than I would say in the workforce, but yeah. let's just say my inner light would radiate so much exactly. that I would be like some huge 
sex goddess just walking around doing my bookkeeping. But yeah. that's because I would be so radiated in that confidence. So, so tell us about that energy. I mean, that was mine. I just, you thank you for reminding me. Indeed. And turn on equals radiance. The, the more that you turn on that, that inner light, that radiance, there, there have been times where I, I myself have had this experience and also other women who I've coached have had this experience where they're out in the world radiating their turn on and people are attracted to it. I once was in the store and I was getting, uh, I had, I was getting my regular seafood and then I wanted to get some scallops cause they looked just so yummy. And I was really turned on. I was really turned on that day. <laughs> I had done all my self care. I had done my pleasure stuff. And I go into the store and I'm, I ask for a reasonable amount. I just wanted it for like literally one meal. So I was like, give me three scallops. By the way, they were huge and oh, they were so good. But <laughs> So he loads up the three, he weighs them and then puts another handful <laughs> of scallops after he's made the tag. <laughs> Because he was influenced by your yeah. <laughs> turn on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you made day. <laughs> exactly. I completely, I wasn't flirting with him directly. I wasn't, I wasn't coming on to him. I'm married. So this wasn't even on my mind. I wasn't even thinking about him. I was just like, I think I want some scallops too. <laughs> Let me go for that. And I felt it in my body. I was connected with the sensation of like, mm, those would be really good. And I know exactly how I'm going to make them. And, you know, I was already in that pleasurable experience. And so he was like, we need to have more. <laughs> he just wanted to contribute to that. <laughs> well, actually, that was so very powerful because yeah. Actually, the allowing yourself, and not you, just you, Tazima, but just us as women, allowing ourselves the space to actually go into that ride of feeling that full juiciness of whatever. Can this be done with anything and anywhere? And, well, talk to me. <laughs> almost anybody, almost. <laughs> um, definitely. Uh, that You can definitely use this at home, unsupervised, <laughs> all right? Um, mostly pleasure you, often is about slowing down. It's often about slowing down. Think about the last time you, either you, Shamna Lee, or other women who are listening to this broadcast, think about the last time you got ready for the day. Hmm. It's something you do every day or every other day. <laughs> or whatever, or twice a day sometimes, you're getting ready for the, more, the daytime and you're getting ready to go to bed. When you prepare, are you going fast or slow? Mm. Are you doing it mindfully or you're doing it on autopilot? It can be pleasurable just by you taking time to, when you do your face lotion, when you do your, are you, are you taking care, are you caring for your body? Are you caressing yourself? Are you treating yourself the way that you would love a lover to, to treat you or touch you? You can be your own lover. Mm. A lover goes slow. A lover doesn't rush in. So are you a lover of yourself? You can use that. Find out <laughs> after the break. <laughs> Well, but that's it. Um, we, we, especially in, well, actually, as we are recording this, we are now in times that we are forced to slow down. Yeah. But usually in daily life, we are always in that rush of doing and being and working and all those ings yes. for others, for whatever we believe is true. And so we don't tend to... Um, do that caress moment, yeah. yeah. Especially in physical, because the physical giving it to yourself, I believe. Well, not I believe, but many of us feel is, you know, unwanted, unnecessary, and whatever. So yeah. talk to us about that. Absolutely. So, <clears throat> because of the way a woman's brain operates, we 
subordinate our needs to the needs of others. If you think about this on an evolutionary basis or a survival of the species basis, it makes sense that a woman would make sure that the baby is taken care of so that the baby doesn't die. Okay, so mm. it, we're wired. It's our brain. It's not like, why can't I prioritize pleasure? It's because your brain is wired in such a way to make sure other people are handled for the survival of the species. So if you are rushing through the day, especially in times of high stress or times where we're, we're concerned about something that's either out of our control or is beyond what we can do in this moment, we want to rush to get there so we can be in action about that. So what goes first? Self-care. If we feel like we're in scarcity, we're going to do the thing instead of doing the self-care. Self-care is the first thing that drops off when we feel stressed. And what would you, yeah, sorry, continue. I was just, the first thing. so it, it's the first thing that drops off when we feel stressed and the challenge then becomes we get even more stressed because now there's nothing that was nice and we're rushing into a stressful situation or we've got these pressures and it's kept us up at night and, and they're, oh, I'll do the pleasure later. No, you won't do it later. <laughs> You'll just be more pissed later. You'll be more frustrated later. You'll be more intensely strung, str high strung later without the pleasure, without these things that nourish us. Now you said something at the beginning, you said that you did your own daily self-care thing. Yeah. Now, I was immediately intrigued. Yeah. What do you do? So, um, one, in general, I, I mean, if it's very yeah, personal. Yeah. No, it's, it's fine. So some of the things that I do actually reside on something I call my pleasure menu. So there are things that I know if I do that thing, it, I'm gonna feel really good. One of those things is doing my hair. So there's a way that I do my hair and I touch it up and I make it, you know, shiny and pretty. And sometimes doing my makeup makes me happy when, especially if I don't feel like I have to. <laughs> I do, I get like creative and I try to make it look a certain way. Um, and so, you know, I have these body butters that smell really good to me. They smell really good. And I have this one that has sparkles in it, like glitter. <laughs> right? <laughs> Yeah, I get. I'm not seven, but my inner seven year old loves this glitter. And so I glitter, I put the glitter on. It's not like, you know, and I, I, I'm married to a man and it's not like my husband would actually notice that I'm glittery, but I know I'm glittery. Like I know I smell good and he might smell the lotion or he might, you know, but, but the point is I've done this for myself. I'm already there. I'm already nourished by taking the time to apply this body butter with sparkles. <laughs> and now I'm all shiny. Um, and sometimes I'll also do like uh, dancing. So I'll dance to a really sexy song or like really isolate, do some belly dance and isolate my different parts, you know? And so I'm in my body, I'm really embodied. So it's, it's less that I'm in my head and, oh, I'm trying to look good. No, it's, I feel good. And then as I feel good, I'm also radiating. Yeah. That is, well, that is very powerful. And I must say, uh, thank you for reminding me of this because that when you are when i when you are in that zone of i am yeah if this is a zone of i am i would say mm -hmm. then <laughs> so many songs are now entering my head like ain't no stopping us now you know <laughs> like, and that was one of them that just popped by <laughs> sure for yeah. sure because that you're in your queen energy you're in your mm -hmm. most fulfilling yeah so with coming to this the, the the pleasure for women. Now, this is this is was one of them where you are honoring your body. In fact, no, I don't even think I've started in on that. So, how else can we honor ourselves to allow pleasure for our body? You've you've started with the makeup and the sprinkles and the dancing. So, are there other ways that we can pleasure ourselves? Not only necessarily in the physical, but in just yeah. bring it on. Make your environment delicious. What, what, what else could be clearer or nicer or how, 
how can my space that I'm in, that I'm living in or, or the space in which I'm working or moving, what about my space would make me happy? When I look at my living room, I have the plants that I love so much. It's almost like they're, you know, they're smiling at me. So there are going to be individual things for each person that brings that smile or that lightness or that radiance. Like, oh, when I have that, like it might be a specific candle. It might be a specific um, song or uh, something that you would do. Like some people love to chant. So getting into that mantra that you love so much or whatever. And, and notice, notice what I'm saying here. All of, I'm indicating all things that are related to the senses. Mm. When you're experiencing that space in that way, you're coming to your senses. You're present in the moment. And that is the connection to our sensuality. So things that stimulate your senses cultivate sensuality. And that's what I've been talking about. When I start talking about it, I automatically start moving my body. I'm, I become more animated. I become more alive. It's natural. I'm not putting this on. This is not something I'm like, okay, now I'm going to be sexy. Like, no, that's, that's now, that's not it. Like, no, that you can tell that that's put on. This is radiating from within me as me. So Sometimes women attempt to be something outside, some standard that they're trying to emulate. Yeah. The sexiest thing that you can be is you turned on. The silence is because I'm, I recognize, I know it, and I'm winking, and I'm not going to talk about it. <laughs> yeah. That's you it. turned on is the sexiest thing you can be. Yeah. And if there's part of yourself that you're hiding, it's going to show as like a gap in the radiance. So why is it or what things do we, what um, what is stopping many women from that radiance, that pleasure, that that self, that part of the self love? What stops us from that? One big one is what I call the myth of selfishness. That's a big one. It's a big one. It and it's right there, also connected to shame, which is pretty, pretty prevalent in our in our society. <clears throat> Sexual shame and body shame and and all of these pieces. I can get it all way, way, way into the into the reasons for all this. But with that myth of selfishness, let's go back to the the female brain, that feminine brain that we have, where we're wired to take care of other people. So in a space where we're wired to take care of other people, it's our nature and it feels more normal for us to put other people first. Let's do a reality check though. If you don't get that email back right this second, if you take five breaths before you send that email, would it, would it, would the world end? Probably not. Would you get killed by a lion? Probably not, because there are no lions right now. <laughs> not, in, not in our modern society. Not, not that we'll pounce at our you know, front door if we didn't send that email, if we didn't, you know, in five minutes. It's so stressors, our bodies are wired to respond to stressors as it's an emergency, like a life-threatening emergency. So being selfish and then also getting away from that stress that's that is this physical immediate danger, those things are myths. What's really happening is you have some stimulation, something happens, it's a change, it's something is a priority, becomes a priority, something like that. Then you have your response to it. Oh, I better address that straight away. I know mm -hmm. I have a key, <laughs> but I gotta go, I gotta finish this last thing or I gotta do it. One of the questions that I always ask audiences when I'm presenting either in a forum like this or on stage is how many women have not peed or held their pee to finish something else, to accomplish one more thing? Yeah. Don't we all? Is my first reaction? We do because we're wanting to take care of others and we put subordinate our needs. So pleasure, if, if you're not peeing, 
Where's pleasure? Pleasure is not even on the radar. Of course, that's going to drop. This is a biological need that you're not prioritizing in order to do something probably for someone else, probably mm. not for yourself. So taking care of yourself, if your bladder pressure is relieved on the most basic level, if your pressure on your bladder is relieved, you are going to be able to be more present and more effective. If you then on the other end of that spectrum, so there's basic needs. And then on the other end of that spectrum is like really luscious desires being totally fulfilled. If you fulfill those desires prior to doing that email, and this also might mean that you got to get up a little earlier. It might mean that you got to go to sleep a little earlier. All of those things pay into, and then you'll have enough of your needs and desires met so that mm. you have more resilience in the world. It's really interesting how it works. You have less resilience if you're stressed out. You have more resilience if you have more pleasure. So how do we then, would you then say, um, bring that stress level down? I know you think, I think you said it in your introduction, but again, yeah. um, what would then be bringing that stress down or raising our desires so that we are more in this beautiful bubble of I am and our own pleasure? Yeah. First thing is to identify it. Identify those needs and desires. What do you what do you need? I ask women this question all the time. And do you know at least at least 50% say I don't know first mm -hmm. like right away. It's not even it's not even like let me think about that. They do not have them on the tip of their tongue. <laughs> yeah, they just shut it. I don't know. Ready. It's not even ready. So first step is identify your needs and desires. People talk about needs, wants, and desires, or sometimes we, I refer, the only thing I put in the, in the middle there is needs, interests, and desires. Cause wants, want, it's, want is a funny word. It's, it sounds like a head thing. It is a head thing. I want this. And a lot of times want is, is it's, it's a should masquerading as want. Hmm. But if you think about desire, desire is very personal. A yeah. need is very personal. A want is somewhere out there. It's probably been dictated by our society. It's probably something that, that someone told us was good or we should be doing. And interest is also personal, but it's a little, it's kind of in the middle. It's between needs and desires. I really focus on the poles because needs get you to, to standard. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. okay, I can function. <laughs> desires like burst you over the top. They really uh, fill you up. Mm. They kind of fill up your pleasure cup. Actually, that's quite true. I mean, even when, when you were describing that, I suddenly saw in my mind's eye, and I hope I don't get banned for this, but I just saw, saw the caramel F feeling of Werther's original. Do you know, do you know that, 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 that boy with the grandfather feeling? It's like, I feel it. <laughs> it just, when you said desires, I'm like, word is original. It's like, I haven't had that in years, but yeah. sorry, that just entered yeah. my head. <laughs> totally. Well, but, but, but again, you're in your senses. There's mm. not, a, when you have that particular candy, there's a way that the flavor does more than just like, <laughs> it's in your mouth and then you get this other body sensation. It for you is this particular candy for other people. It's a particular other kind of smell or like I, I really feel that way, a similar way with um, with smelling the earth mm. after rain. Like if I'm in the woods and like that, like really earthy plant smell like that for me is just so good. And then like to see the sunshine, like the rays coming through the leaves. <sighs> Mm. And it, it is that full body experience. So it's it's beyond the just the taste buds. It goes way beyond the taste buds. It goes way beyond this thing that you're seeing. It goes into a whole experience that gets you to that more radiant place. So how would I then want to know how do we do this? I mean, I'm not telling you like like say to give like like tips or whatever, but it's like. I guess what you're trying to say is, is in, let it, that we should engage all of our senses in our visualization. It's not even just visualization. It's um, entering that dream, and not as a dream far away, but as if the dream is already here. Is that, that would be 
what it, you are saying. But the, I guess we, I guess we might be even sidetracking here <laughs> concerning that this part of the pleasure. <laughs> Sorry about that. No so worries. we are talking about the physical. We are talking about the 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 sense of pleasure in the dream state. Um, mm-hmm. Then there are, of course, because uh, there was something else you said about the 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 uh, the shaming part of things. Yeah. So shame is very much linked to the body. How can we address that part of things? So I, I, just like I've been talking about the female brain, there's a part of our selves that identifies itself as self when we're very little children. So when we're babies and young people, like. Le- younger than two, we're only just starting to identify ourselves. And a baby, if you think about a newborn baby, they're all sensation all the time. They're like bright lights. It's been dark for nine months of their life so far. And then they burst out into like, ah, like it's like a really trippy, must be a really trippy experience. (laughs) <laughs> but they start, they, they show up and everything is, it's, it's technicolor. It's like, they've never experienced anything like that. There's a certain level of wonder with young babies. Part of the sensation that they feel in their bodies is touch. So then you have, Oh, this is my hand. You have, Oh, this is my body. But before there's an, a me, there's just this oneness of being that little tiny babies have. But then at some point, mom or primary caregiver is looking into the eyes and then the identity is formed of like, oh, I'm me and mom's the other person or my primary caregiver is that other person. Oh, this is interesting. Okay, got it. So a a baby, of course, wouldn't say interesting. Got it. (laughs) A baby would just start to form a, a concept of self. Part of that self is genitals. Our genitals are extremely pleasurable. They're highly sensitive. So of course, once we start touching ourselves, depending on who sees us touching ourselves, our our genitals specifically, how that person reacts gives us information about good, bad. We're just trying to figure it out. We have no details on the society. We're not, we don't know yet. So we're learning from the reactions of our caregivers around us. And so if our genitals are providing pleasure, there's a disconnect when someone shows up and says, oh, that's bad. Wait, Um, this feels so good. And also our, because it's such a potent self, it's like self experience. If it's shamed, if it's shamed, then your identity is based on shame. Like I'm shameful. And that's connected and, to your to your genitals now and your whole being. And it is in your formative years, I would say, because that's in your 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 base programming as sure. in your youngest years. So that's pretty harsh. And I guess we many of us, I, I, I don't dare say all, but many of us have had this. And yeah. I'm actually curious is exactly how do we then get over that pre-programming of the shame? Um, is one is to know to know who you are, know, know your body, know yourself, know, know your bits. Um, bits is a word that I use so that it's all encompassing. Um, and I'm going to, I'm going to use my, my, the word that I actually call female genitalia, which is a pussy. And the reason I call it pussy is because that's, that term is actually all inclusive. It's actually talking about all of the parts, whereas the word vagina does not. The oh. vagina is literally only the birth canal. It's only the tube that leads from the cervix to the opening of the vaginal opening of the body. That's it. It does not include the clitoris. It does not include the labia, the inner and outer labia. It does not in- include the internal structure of the clitoris. So there's the out- outside part of the clitoris, which is really just a little little, tiny piece. And then there's this whole internal world. It's, it, it's like an upside down heart and some wings. It's like, it's so fabulous. (laughs) And it is actually for 
people who have vulvas or women who, um, who are cisgender, who were born with feminine or female genitalia. The clitoris is an internal structure that is analogous to the external structure of the penis. If uh, One way I like to explain this is expecting, a lot of women expect that they should be able to just have sex and uh, intercourse specifically vaginal penetration intercourse, and they should be able to have a, an orgasm. And I, the way that I like to put this is that, hey, what if you had sex with a, a male-bodied person and you only touched the testicles and expected them to orgasm? Everybody would be like, that what? Would like, unless that particular person is really way into ball play and maybe they can, but it's going to be rare. Similarly, it's rare for a woman to be able to only climax or only have pleasure from the vaginal penetration. Only three to 10% of women can actually climax with vaginal penetration alone. At least 65 to 70% of women um, need clitoral stimulation in order to experience climax. And a lot of times, even the penetration, if a woman is turned on enough, that is actually stimulation of the internal clitoris. The G spot is the back of the clitoris. So it's all about the clitoris. The clitoris is the organ of pleasure in a female bodied person. So how, so where would we then go in, do we then have this conversation with the other, let's say, to find out how this works or to, do, we, do we discover it for ourselves? It's uh, absolutely how do we so critical because a lot of times your partner won't know because the partner, your partner does not have your body. I don't care if it's a, if it's a woman, a man or something in between I, or so, someone in between. I, Gender happens on a spectrum, and so do genitals. It, it's not binary. It's all the way. There, there's parts that are that are analogous to to both both genders or all the genders. Uh, so it's important for you to know yourself. Mm. How you do that? You explore yourself. I recommend for women to begin owning the sexual self by exploring the sexual self. You'll notice that not just your genitals feel sexual or sensual pleasure, your whole body can be activated for sensual or sexual pleasure. So don't just go straight to the genitals, check mm -hmm. out your whole body. What, body. what body part feels good? Is it the back of your neck? Is the inner arm? Is it the inner thigh? Is the outer thigh? Is it the knee? Whatever it is. And then with your hands clean, wash your hands first, have some lube on hand. So don't, don't try to do this dry moisturize the labia, use uh, some nice lube. I recommend something that is pure, that, that doesn't have uh, a bunch of weird stuff in it. I, there are a few that I, that I personally like. I have some recommendations of lube that I have on my website and other products on my website that you can check out. But <clears throat> use, bring, use the lube, have, have lube handy, so that when you start to explore the different areas. So there's a whole, there's a whole region. It's not just, it's not just this, the whole, it's the labia, even the pubic hair, the, the mons pubis. So the pubic mound, the, the labia, the introitus, the, that opening, the perineum. So you can, uh, you can look at any diagram of a vulva and see the, all these parts pointed out. And for yourself, you can take a mirror and a light and some privacy and check it out. Mm. Look, own your body. Feel what feels good. Does this feel good? What about pressure? Experiment with different ways of stimulating yourself. Don't go in with a goal. Go in with the, with the intention to explore and find out what mm. feels good to me. The more you know what feels good to you, then you can share it with your partner. And then you can say, I don't like when you suck my clitoris hard. I like it when you do it softer. I like it when you touch my clitoris after you've already touched my labia. I like it after I, you've stimulated my breasts or rubbed my hair or whatever it is. Ask for what you want. 
take time to identify what you need. And, and this could be ask for what you want, ask for what you need, ask for your interests, ask for what your desire. We had the whole conversation earlier about needs, wants, desires, interests. Fill in the blank of what if you need that clitoral stimulation, you, it's time to ask for it. Mm. In asking, you're, you're, the best way to go about asking is to have a conversation outside of the bedroom with clothes on. <laughs> In the same way that you don't just show up at a restaurant and be like, what restaurant do you want to eat at? <laughs> <laughs> You're already at the restaurant. <laughs> if you wanted Thai food, but you're already at the Italian place, you can't. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So before you get to the bedroom, before you're naked with your partner, before, 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 talk about it, have a conversation, even ask about, hey, partner, can we have a conversation about what I like in sex? I would love to share what works for my body. You need to have done your homework. You need to have explored this for yourself. If you already know and you already like, no, I like this, this, and this, then your advanced homework would be, what else do you like? If you have a standard routine, what would take it to the next level? What would really make it even juicier for you? And that, that may take some exploration. Have that sensuality pleasure date with yourself to check it out. Feel, feel what feels good. And as you have that conversation with your partner, say, hey, this is my... Uh, these are my yes, no, maybes. This is a yes. I definitely, definitely want this. This is a no. I definitely don't want this. And this is a maybe. Perhaps I might want to explore this, but let me check it in with you. So uh, a no is like, it's like, I definitely don't, do not um, pinch me. For example, don't pinch me. It hurts. I don't like it. It will be over if you pinch me. <laughs> A yes is I definitely, definitely want to experience some some form of orgasm or some form of deep pleasure. I would like for my G spot to be stimulated. I would like for my nipples to be sucked or pinched or rubbed or whatever. Uh, and then the maybe is, you know, I think I'd like to I'd like for you to tie a scarf around my wrist. Just I want to check that out. I want to see what that's like. But I'll 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 hand you the scarf. When I'm ready, <laughs> like an example of how you might set that up. And then if you don't grab the scarf, then that's that's out. You're not going to do that today. Or maybe you you do like a, a a run of like, can you tie my hands like this together instead of like this together? Because those are two different. Or or like the the to, at the elbows, like that would really do something totally different than this just the wrist or the hands like so so you can do a dry run and then you can do the wet run mm. <laughs> <laughs> she said smiling very seductively mm -hmm. yes <laughs> wow so tazima <laughs> Um, what I would like to know is I mean uh, we've talking about well we've talking about bits and pussy as well I mean like words for and there's a lot of shame about around that so actually mm -hmm. part of our discovery of what we how we feel about ourselves, it also has to do with the wordings. Um, so I guess it's also part of us to discover as well, wouldn't you say? Indeed, vocabulary is very personal and I'm gonna give this with um, some guidance and a, and, a, and a caveat. So if pussy offends you to the deepest core of yourself, okay, I can understand that. That's not about your pussy. That's about shame and how you were, how you were programmed. programmed. If you don't have words for the actual parts of your body, you can't ask for what you desire. You can't ask for what you need. If you just say, well, go down there, do some stuff. If you, if you can't say it and request it, it's not gonna happen. So it's really important for you to have a word that works for you. I like pussy, and here's my pussy talk. I love pussy because pussy is it's a it's a chargy word, it's electric. And it, it's like you say pussy and it gets people attention. Like you kind of people smile or like they're like they get offended or or you know, you're gonna get a reaction. And it's also a soft word, pussy. 
It's got two S's in it. It's got a little P on the beginning. Like it's soft. A pussy is soft. And it's also potent and electric. It's also strong. I, I think pussy is the, a great word to use to include everything, all the hot parts, all the, the other, you know, every aspect of it. It's all inclusive word. And it's also super important for you to identify the location of your clitoris if you don't already know it. Identify how it wants to be touched. Identify where is the labia, which labia, what's the, you know, your labia might not look what you like what you think it should look like. Everybody's labia is beautiful. Uh, the whole, all pussies are beautiful. All pussies are awesome. We're often shamed because there's an unrealistic standard that's set by porn and set by, you know, this, this vag labiaplasty is like the, one of the biggest, you know, growing thing because women feel insecure, but they haven't been reflected in a positive way. So know the names of it recognize there there are a lot of things called vulva galleries or you know look them up online not the ones that are porn clamshell where you don't there's nothing sticking out or like it's neat and there's no hair on it as a grown woman i err on the side of wanting to actually have hair it's you know it's and i love my labia you know they've got their own little shape but you got to love your own body and part of your body is your genitals. And I talked a little bit about a gap earlier. Yeah. And there's an energy gap. If you have, so for example, if you feel good about like your skin, you've done a really good job on your facial skin, it's really great or whatever, or or there's a part of your body that you really like. You're you're a fan of, you know, the way your legs look, or you're a fan of like, <laughs> you know, your head shape, or like your your hair is looking good that day. If, 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 if you've got something going on that's good, but then you have this like piece that's like, oh, I feel shameful. Oh, I'm on my period today. Oh, I smell bad. Oh, I, I need to shave my legs or, oh, I need, that will show as like an energetic dark spot in your energy field. Wow. And the way that I experienced it in my body is before I brought more of my sexual self, owning my sexual self, there was a way that I had like these parts that were shored up, like there were these holes in my kind of in the core of my being, like me and my 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 selfness kind of at the solar plexus chakra. And then at the solar uh, as at the sacral chakra was sort of like a, a, a void and kind of an in like a gap, a space where there was shame and also don't see me. I'm like, I have a mm -hmm. bar that there's nothing down there. Like, don't look. Um, and so as I began to own myself, those spaces got filled up. My posture shifted. My way of being was more solid. It was more, it, it had more integrity. There was more structural integrity in my being. So that's how it occurred for me and my body. It may occur differently for you and your body or anyone who's listening. It's it's a way of 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 filling in those gaps of spaces where we felt like we couldn't own it, like I couldn't be that. I I shouldn't be so sexual. I shouldn't have sex with so many people or this particular person. It's bad all the, us shooting on ourselves. And so yeah, this is a way that I filled myself up I filled up the things that I like. I got to know myself. I got to own myself. And in knowing and owning myself, then I could decide, well, what's pleasurable to me? And then that then is as I add those pleasures, I'm filling up this pleasure cup that I have, mm. filling up the things that my container, my being, okay, my before my cup, my pleasure cup had a hole in it. <laughs> <laughs> it had a hole in it. So, and it was way low. So I couldn't really even get anything in there. So if the hole is in the bottom of the cup. Yeah. Whatever you put in doesn't, doesn't work. Doesn't, so doesn't I'd, stick. I'd be yeah. having sex and I'd be, you know, I'd be 
in my head, not really enjoying it. I'm doing it just to be doing it. No, it, that's not. You've got to love yourself first, is what you're saying. Actually, love yourself first, completely in all, inside out, and body, and make it yourself feel juicy. Yeah. And also, as you said, ask for what you want. So that's that's like a recap in all of this. Yeah. And boy, I, I mean, is it? I don't even dare ask. Is there anything else you want to share? Because we might be off for another. <laughs> for yeah, yeah, yeah. The only the only thing I would say is, you know, there's a lot of pressure of people saying, love yourself first. You may not get a hundred percent there, but it definitely helps when you have someone who's reflecting you in a positive way. Hmm. So negative people, like if, if, if the person is critical um, and they're a friend, you may want to consider either having a conversation with them or, you know, discontinuing the friendship. And letting them know if your partner is is a supportive person or if you ask for that support that you really need, that person can be a partner in you loving yourself. you got to allow yourself to start having the people help you feel well, help you feel well about you. My, my husband is wonderful at this. He affirms me in ways. He lets me know when I'm feeling insecure, he lets me know, Hey, sweetheart, you know, you're doing great. He knows that I need verbal affirmation. I have shared that with him. I told him specifically verbal affirmation. I set this up ahead of time before I needed it. And so it's super, super, super helpful for you to have a partner in this as well. So yes, do the thing, self-exploration, all of those pieces. And you may not get to arrive to, I love myself completely a hundred percent. You may not get there, but you shouldn't wait to have pleasure until that time. <laughs> Just you get, you get better at it over time. Uh, wow. People can help. Super. So I would like to know, dear Tazima, and thank you, Anna, for having watched live. I, I see your comments. Thank you, sweet. I would like to know it's in this because it's so much more that we you can share. I know that you have a book that you have got and the book is called, I believe, Pleasure Without Guilt. Am I correct? Without guilt. Yep. Yeah. So I'm just so, going to put that up there. Yep. So where can we find you to get more information, support? And, you know, I mean, you being a sex coach or that might be my, my words. Where yep. can we find you, Tazima? So it's infiniterelating.com is my website. Um, in the pleasure shop, you can get the resources and my recommendations that I that I put out for your pleasuring yourself or finding pleasure and connecting. Um, and you can also follow me on Instagram, it's Tazima Paris, the at symbol Tazima Paris. And I'm also on there as infinite relating. So um, yeah, so join me online and check it out. Uh, and yeah, experiment. This is this is all about experience. 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 Well, <laughs> I would like to thank you very much, Tazima, for this pleasurable interview mm -hmm. <laughs> and it's actually beyond pleasurable because it's so insightful and it has taken us on a journey of the senses and awakenings and awareness so uh, lovely ladies thank you very much for having watched i advise you to go back and watch it a few times because i'm sure that every time you watch it you'll pick up something else so uh i would like to thank you very much for having watched this series and the, this and the final video in the empowerment uh, goddess creations empowerment marathon and of course you can watch these videos on youtube again and again so thank you very much ladies for watching thank you very much to zima for sharing so generously of your insights and wisdom and stay tuned because i'm sure that more will be coming shamanly gray goddess creations thank you very much and have a lovely day bye <laughs>